let's have a closer look at this important relationship and see why it holds. I will first give you a mathematical explanation which is not completely and technically correct, but which is more intuitive. So suppose that we have a utility function. It depends on two variables like this. And let's say that this utility function is a smooth function. If I increase my consumption of good one by a small amount that I denote by delta x1, what will happen to my level of utility? Well, we know the answer if delta x1 is small, utility will increase by delta u, which is approximately equal to the marginal utility of good one multiplied by the change in x1. This result holds if I keep x2 fixed. Similarly, if I keep x1 fixed and increase x2 by a small amount delta x2, then utility will increase by approximately mu2 multiplied by delta x2. So what if I increase x1 by delta x1 and I increase x2 by delta x2? Well, then the increase in utility will be approximately mu1 times delta x1. That's the increase in utility from increasing consumption of good one plus mu2 times delta x2, the increase in utility from my increased consumption of good two. Now, if I want to stay on the indifference curve, then utility cannot change. The level of utility is the same for all bundles along the indifference curve. That means that remaining on the indifference curve will restrict this expression to be equal to zero no change in utility. Now let's take this expression, move this part over to this side. Then we have mu2 delta x2 is equal to minus mu1 times delta x1. Let's divide both sides by mu2. We have delta x2. Well, this should be approximately equal to approximately equal to minus mu1 over mu2 times delta x1. Divide both sides by delta x1 and we have delta x2 over delta x1 is approximately equal to minus mu1 over mu2. Now, as delta x1 goes to zero, we're making a smaller and smaller change in the consumption of good one, then this expression will go to dx2 dx1. And the approximation will become exact as delta x1 goes to zero. So this will become m minus mu1 over mu2, and this is mrs. If you want to do this a little bit more formally, then you can use the implicit function theorem and the chain rule to prove this result. Again, I have a utility function. I assume that this is smooth. I also need to impose this assumption that my marginal utility of good two is not equal to zero at the particular consumption bundle that we're looking at. If the partial derivative of u with respect to x2 is not zero, then it follows from the implicit function theorem that we can write x2 as a function of x1, at least in the neighborhood containing my particular bundle. A particular indifference curve has the equation u of x1, and x2 is some function of x1, needs to be equal to some constant. This part here is now just a function of one variable, namely x1, since x2 depends directly on x1. So what I can do is I can simply differentiate both sides with respect to x1. If I differentiate the left-hand side with respect to x1, then by the chain rule, that will become partial u partial x1 times the derivative of x1 with respect to itself, so that's just one, plus partial u partial x2 times the derivative of x2 with respect to x1, that's dx2 dx1, 
if I differentiate the right hand side, that's just a constant, so the derivative is zero. From this equation, I can simply solve for dx to dx1 and it becomes minus du dx1 over du dx2, which is the same thing as the ratio of the marginal utilities. I guess it kind of depends on how much math you know, which one of these you prefer. Well, to be realistic, I suppose that some of you don't really enjoy any of these two demonstrations.